Welcome back to the channel guys. It is time to do some Dreamcast love as that is probably one of my favorite consoles of all time. And today we're going to do part one of probably three or four different parts because there's also going to be the review of what I'm about to do and a bunch of other things that are going to be changed in this system. Uh, I'm ordering everything in doubles as I'm doing a friend system as well. And I just said, oh my God, this is going to be the ultimate Dreamcast. Now, I've already started years ago, many years ago, when these cases were actually $30. Now they're $250 to uh, $160 or $140 to buy a colored shell. Ridiculous. I am so glad that I did this about, poof, 10 years ago that... This is one of my original Dreamcasts. I have bought two, one that stayed sealed and one that I changed the shell on. Unfortunately, I don't even know what happened to my old shell, but oh well. So I have a couple little things ordered for this as well to finish it off. And that'll be like the last part, just doing that little finisher. So guys, sit back, relax. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I suggest that you do because if you're a Dreamcast fan, you're going to love this. Okay, so in this part, we are going to do a Dreamcast mod where we're going to remove the optical drive. Now, we're going to remove the optical drive, and I know you're going to say, oh my god, you're wrecking a Dreamcast. No, we're not. So when you remove the parts that we're going to remove, this does nothing to affect the unit in any way other than save your actual original hardware. So I can put this original hardware in static bags and put it away and I won't have to worry about anything. Although, I do have a black sports edition. Something went wrong with the optical drive and I may take the drive from this one and put it in that one just to fix things up. As I said, this one will probably never go back to being an optical style system again. It's going to be a GDU ROM unit. So in here is the housing to make this complete and look like the original, kinda. And then in here, we have the new motherboard that's gonna go in that replaces the optical drive, acts like an optical drive, but runs on SD cards. What we're gonna do now is we're going to take the Dreamcast apart, get ready to put in these parts, and go from there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the Dreamcast apart. Um, one thing you will need is a good Phillips screwdriver, something with a bit of length on the shaft so that you can actually go down in the, the holes can be pretty deep on the console in certain places. And this is very necessary to have a decent screwdriver. I was gonna use a smaller bit, but I, see, I felt that it was actually slipping on the screws. And one thing you don't wanna do is actually damage your original screws because that would just suck. So, right off the bat, if you ever wanna see a full teardown of the Dreamcast, please leave a comment below. This will kind of be close because as over the, the duration of what I'm gonna to do to this system, there is a lot of tearing down. So at this point, we're going to take it apart first. So now you'll see how the console comes apart. It's actually fairly easy. I did this 10 years ago. I'm sure I can remember. First things first, of course, you want to remove the modem and that's a clip right here. And you just basically pull it out, okay? so. The clip, pull out, don't slide, it, it, it's just a pull out. As you can see that my mod had even included, of course, the new cover for the modem. And there is a network adapter out there. I'm gonna try and hunt it down as well because that would be absolutely sweet on this unit. So there's gonna be, I believe, four screws. So you have one where the modem was, one here, here, and here. So it's pretty straightforward as far as that goes. Now we have the screws removed, this should just lift off and voila, so there's no connections to this whatsoever. The light is actually in the unit, uh, everything is in the unit, that this will just come right off. Now we are looking at the inside of the Dreamcast, you can see that it's a very compact system. You'll also see that the power supply takes up a lot, and I mean a lot, of the uh, interior of the unit, also making the unit hot. Um, this is going to also be part of the mod moving forward. 
Um, I won't get into that right now. First, we're gonna replace the optical drive and replace it with the SD emulation board and uh, get this taken care of. As far as I know on this unit here, there should only be three screws. I think one, two, three. Not 100% if there's a screw over here, but uh, we'll find out in just a moment. There we have it. So now, the whole entire laser assembly unit is removed from the Dreamcast, as you can see here. And it was pretty simple. There's no ribbon cables, nothing to worry about in this part of the mod, because it just plugs into the bottom part of the board here. Okay, so we're not removing the motherboard in this setup. So it just plugs in here. This is what we removed, it's three screws. Very, very simple. This is the nice thing about this. It's actually a very simple, uh, I think it should be a very simple build, but we're going to find out now. So now, there is the getting this stuff out, taking a look at it and finding out how this goes together to go in here. So first we're gonna take a look at the housing. So we can make it look like a uh, kind of a, a replica of the optical drive still being there. So that's that. Have some screws. Looks like we may have a manual here. And we have whatever this is. Okay, so this should be the reset button. There's a sticker here. I think this would go right underneath here if you're going to install um, a reset or something like that. So right now I'm gonna take that sticker off because definitely think that is a option I wanna have. Um, let's take a look at what this is. Okay. So there's some sort of doohickey bracket here. We're gonna call it a doohickey because at this point, it's all I know what it is, is a doohickey. Okay, so let's see what's in here. So this should have an SD extension cable. And there it is. So the SD extension cable is needed because what we're going to do, SD extension cable is needed because we're gonna modify the actual um, placement of this here. So what's gonna happen is this piece here, it looks like an SD card, is going to plug into the GD-ROM and then it's going to bolt up in here and you'll have your slot in right here for kind of like a cartridge and then you have an extra one here for putting an extra uh, memory card if you have multiple memory cards so you can have like so many games on one put a bunch of games on this one and they're right there okay when in doubt of course always refer to whatever manual they give you because i've never done this before and you just don't know and in this case ain't much of a manual all right, so what we need to do first is install this. You've got to take two screws from here and they're going to become stops, I guess is the best way to put it, so that it stops this from falling out. It says to use the shorter one, which is a two by uh, five. So you're just going to look here and find your shorter screws. So it is, there's only two screws that are actually the smallest. One didn't come out of my package, which made me worry a little. I was like, um, these really seem like they uh, are too big. So here's something else you need to know. So you need a uh, smaller screwdriver after all. <laughs> it's a small screwdriver after all because it uh, has a different Phillips head on this where it's a small screw. And again, I recommend a magnetic one. And if it's not magnetic and you have something like a magnet, all you need to do is rub your screwdriver on that magnet and you will magnetize your screwdriver. Definitely needs to be magnetized. I can't see how you could get your fingers down here to do this. Okay, so now we have this SD reader uh, mounted. You'll also notice when plugging in the SD card to screw down, one way it has to be forced in, don't force it, turn it around and you'll find that it just slips in. Okay, that's very important because it would suck if you break things. Simple as that. So this doohickey that we were wondering about, your motherboard or main board here is going to bolt to this. And that board, then this will bolt to the side. I'll show you in just a second. So let's get this main board out, take a look at it. 
Never leave any screws like I did just a minute ago. Just making sure. Now, one nice thing, and the reason why I ordered this kit over another seller was he gave me uh, copper heat sinks. And I know it's probably not something that gets too hot, but you don't know. I don't know anything about this. So I said, hmm, I'm going to go with the guy that has a good deal and has heat sinks for these two chips right here. These are your two main chips that are that literally control this. So I would suggest always keeping everything, anything that can run cool, you, you want it to run cool. So in this GDMU, um, I want to make sure that everything is cool as possible. So we're going to take these out. We're going to mount them. And that way we know it's done. Ooh, 3M sticker uh, or thermo stickers. That's good. At least they didn't cheap out there. Not that 3M is the win all because sometimes 3M stuff has let me down. But most times 3M just works. Basically, you're just going to put them on so that you got a nice, you know, square as possible because I'm a little bit of a neat freak. Um, but looks really good. Not much to this board actually. <laughs> you have a reset, which is what I'm hoping this here button goes down on. You have your SD reader, which you would normally use if you didn't have this extension mod. So that's something important. If you don't buy this extension mod, it, I mean, it adds up a bit. I mean, you're looking at probably uh, about 120 or so dollars Canadian by the time you, you buy everything here. But it's well worth it looking professional and having the proper mods instead of having to reach in, putting your hand down inside the system, trying to take out a card or, or whatever the case may be. So now that we have that done, I need to mount this to this. When you're mounting this, just because I was just messing up, you have a slope right here. Make sure that's the part that's down on the, your table and this side up. So their screw holes there will line up perfectly. And it tells you that they are a three by five. 3D print quality on this is absolutely phenomenal. I gotta say, I'm very, very, very impressed. Oop. Uh, don't make it tight all the way until you get everything. And just make it snug. Don't over tighten it. Because it was warping. It was actually pulling when I was trying to put this together just then. And that is something you don't want. I was just trying to figure out why the screw wouldn't uh, tighten. And the hole was bigger than the screw. Because right there you don't actually put a screw. Huh. My bad. Should pay more attention. So, now that we have that all mounted up, you can see that I did what I said. The heat sinks and everything are to the top and the curve is right here. So that is the right way to mount this. And now we want to take this and we want to mount it to this. Okay, so again, it is this way with the slope going this way, just like I had showed previously. The instructions kind of throw you off, but that is the way. So now we want to mount this to this. And before you do that, you want to take your cable, put it down, Put this in place, kind of, because you need to plug this in. None of this is making sense. None of this is making sense. None of this is making sense, 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 sense. Okay, so there is a flaw here, and the flaw is it looks like these cooling chips that we put on cannot be on here if you're using this piece here. Now, that could be altered, of course, by making a few cuts. I'm actually shocked that they include them. Um, knowing that this could be a problem. Because it physically is a problem. I cannot put these pieces back up here properly. All right, so I removed the two heat sinks to see if I'm absolutely correct. I don't know how hot this thing gets, so that'll be down the road further to understand how this all works when I do a review on what I've done here. So just basically, I just wanna know that it's actually all going to line up. And without those parts, lines up perfectly. So I'm gonna screw it together and continue doing it as the instructions tell me. Fold your ribbon cable this way, just so you don't have any excess cabling in your way. Line up the holes. Pretty decent how they built it. I just wish that someone have, had thought of, you know, if you're going to put heat sinks on, put a cut 
in it. And if it does get hot, like if I do find this is getting really, really, really hot, I will uh, alter it. I will take a Dremel and cut these areas right here out just to uh, make sure. But for now, until I do the review, I will just leave it like this. So now we have basically our new, oops. You know what? Just so you know, so that you don't make the same mistake I made, you might want to put the uh, reset button in the hole first. Okay. <laughs> So now that we're past that really dumb move of mine, my reset button works. I'm gonna take one of these heat sinks actually, and I'm gonna put it on on an angle here because it can kind of cool one of the chips there. If it does get in my way, I'll, I'll take it off. But right now I'm just doing it for silliness because it's there, I wanna use it. Okay, so now we're at the point where we need to mount it. So let's take a look. I don't think there's anything here to tell me about that. Oh, no, here we go. So we don't need these. This is if you're just using the board by itself, you use these standoffs. So if you're using it this way, the 3D printed thingamajiggy takes care of everything. So now we're going to use the long screw I now know is for right here. Is for here. Remember the three screws? And it's down so well, it's only uh, the three. So now you can see that my new GDU ROM, GDMU ROM <laughs> is in. Reset button works. Let's put the cover back on. Very, very simple to install. No doubt about this. So we'll just put the cover back on. I don't wanna over tighten anything because if I wreck this shell, then <laughs> I ain't paying 250 or whatever they're going for right now. That's ridiculous. And I apologize to anybody that wants that. Uh, they are not cheap to get anymore. Okay, I'm not just going to put the modem on right now, but there we have it. We have a full installation of the GD ROM, or GDMU ROM. I keep saying that wrong. And it looks as original as the CD drive did. So now I'm going to put it through the paces in another video, tell you what I think of it and go from there. But that's how easy it is to remove your optical drive in a Dreamcast. So you could take that in two different ways here in this video. One, you can use that because maybe your optical drive is bad and you ordered a brand new one and you want to drop it back in. Now you know how to remove it. You know that it's not, no cables at all. It's just three screws. After you get the case off, pull up because it's just on a pressure connector. Same thing with the modem. You just pull out after you push the button here on the side. So now we have started the ultimate Dreamcast build. This is part one of the series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Can't give away anything else at this point, but I'm sure you're going to love how far this machine goes. So anyway, guys, till next time, thank you for watching. Game over.